obvious. But I would ask those who continue to hide behind the facade of large, unspecified cuts. Go spend some time with the men and women at DOT who go out in some of the most extreme weather conditions on the planet and keep our planes flying, our highways open, and our ferries taking Alaskans where they need to go. Go spend some time with Alaskans working in our overloaded, underfunded foster care system and listen to their stories of service and sacrifice. Go spend some time with the Alaska State Troopers who have seen a cut of 77 public safety positions and yet still go out day and night, often without backup, to keep Alaskans safe. Then come back and be specific about who you would fire. The simple truth is that the state is at its lowest staffing levels in 15 years. And the harsher truth is that we are already feeling the effects. While in Sitka on Alaska Day, I stopped by the Trooper Academy to express my gratitude to those dedicated Alaskans training to keep us safe. I asked if anyone had any questions. One hesitant hand went up. A young recruit asked if the pink slips would be going out again this year. He explained that on the first day of training, he received an urgent call from his wife. She told him that in the mail that day, he'd received a 30-day notice of termination due to the state budget not being passed on time. Here we have a young man willing to put his own life at risk to help protect others, and we have to pink slip him on his first day of training because we, the state, can't get our act together. I promised that young man then and there that I would do everything I could do to make sure that he and the thousands of other families impacted would never have to experience that fear and anxiety again. When we don't pass a budget on schedule, the fishing industry openers are interrupted. The Alaska Marine Highway System can't publish a schedule. Teachers get pink slips. Our entire economy is held back by this annual uncertainty. <coughs> any system that cannot deliver a budget within 90 legislative days is broken. And anyone that can't see that or refuses to address it is complicit in that failure. Passing a budget on time is not complicated. Other states do it on time, so can we. The California legislature, for instance, was late passing the budget 25 out of 30 years. The citizens, fed up with the politics, demanded more. In 2010, they voted to stop the legislature's pay if the budget was not passed on time. Since then, with one exception, the California budget has passed on time each year. <laughs> Following statehood, the first Alaska legislature was in session a total of 146 days over the two-year session. During those two years, they organized the new government, passed the budget, created 12 executive departments, the court system, the retirement system, numerous professional licensing boards, and passed 387 bills. This week began our second year of the 30th legislative session. During the first year, 2017, we were in session 211 days and passed 32 bills. I am filing legislation that would move us to a more efficient, effective biennial budget process. It also would mandate that if the governor does not produce the next fiscal year's budget by the statutory deadline of December 15th, the governor's pay stops. If the legislature doesn't pass a budget by the 90th day of the legislative session, their pay stops. Let's pink the... Let's pink slip ourselves before we pink slip our fellow Alaskans. <laughs> Bottom line, we need to improve public safety. We need budget reform. We need a real fiscal plan. And we need to energize our economy. These aren't wants, these are needs. And it's our responsibility to make that happen now. Here's the good news. We can fund our essential government services and get our economy growing again if we muster the courage to take action, if we accept cooperation and compromise as a necessary part of the governing process, we can work together and pass a sustainable budget on time. I'm not suggesting anyone stop fighting for what they believe in. But at the end of the day, 
Following the good fight, we have to be committed to the greater good. Compromise is not commit capitulation. Rather, it is a necessary process in representative government. While some are focused on making a point, let us focus on making a difference. I mentioned earlier, the source of my optimism springs from the state of our state and a new sense of self-determination. Lieutenant Governor Malat and myself, having a unity approach to governing has contributed to that self-determination. In my travels across the state, I'm frequently told how refreshing it is that everyone's ideas are welcome because real solutions have no partisan labels. You know, it's been an amazing three years to serve as Alaska's governor has been the greatest honor of my life. It has certainly also been a tough three years. People ask me if I ever get discouraged, if I ever lose faith in the hope that started this administration. Ultimately, it's my faith in what it means to be an Alaskan, in the knowledge that Alaska is positioned to control its destiny and in understanding the limitless potential that awaits us that secures my great hope in our great state. Do I believe that Alaskans can overcome our political differences and deliver a fiscal plan this session that gives certainty to our businesses and investors and brings back jobs to our communities? I do. Do I believe that Alaskans, tribes and state, oil companies and conservationists, urban and rural, cultural and interior, workers and CEOs, elders and youth can build an economy as large and diverse as the state we call home. I do. Do I still believe that we'll bring our massive natural gas reserves to Alaskans and the world market, securing low-cost energy and putting thousands of Alaskans to work? I do. And after all of this, do I still believe that a fisherman from Yakutat and a carpenter from Valdez can come together around a simple idea that our home and our future matter more than ideology, that in our unity, our independence, Alaska should show the rest of the country a path forward. I absolutely do. <laughs> Some seasoned politicians have proclaimed that nothing can be accomplished this session due to upcoming elections. I could not disagree more. We were hired to work the entire shift, not just the first part of it. I'm taking the field this session and staying on the field until the session is done. And I ask that none of us remain in the locker room trying to keep our uniforms clean in hopes of being in the next year's pictures. <laughs> Let's end the session on the field with the sweat and mud on our uniforms that comes from working hard every day for Alaskans. That's what Alaska's hired us to do, that they deserve nothing less. God bless you all, and may God bless Alaska. Will the joint session come back to order? We'll actually just take a brief at ease so we can clear the gallery. Go ahead.